Um, hello, this is James Morris. I'm doing um, vlog two for um, Susie's assignment. In this vlog, I'll be going over objectivity, patience, um, empathy, and um, the characteristics of a sports leader. <clears throat> so I'm just going to get straight into it. Objectivity. Um, a definition of it, um, it is kind of um, saying lack, lack of um, being biased or judgment. So it's a noun which really describes saying that you you're fair, you don't have any judgment or you don't favour a different team. So it's essential to be a successful sports leader because if you um, if you give out um, unfair results, you're not being a fair teacher or a leader. So if you come in with an open mind and a fair approach, you're giving both teams um, the best chance of winning the game and obviously being more respected. So you give a fair like, outlook on the game. Examples of sports coaches who have demonstrated this characteristics well, referees, for an example, um, Mike Dean, he shows no judgment. Um, he's given um, various penalties for nasty decisions, but he acts on the game. He might even support a team called Tottenham Hotspur, but when they're playing against Arsenal, as some people have seen, he's given decisions against them. That's because he's fair and he shows that he's um, objectivity there. The next one is patience. The capacity to accept tolerance, delay and protect of about being anxious. So um, obviously if you're um, patient, you don't want to, um, if somebody's like getting on your nerves, they're being irritating, you obviously got to have a cool head, let it go over you because um, a good P teacher or a good um, leader um, has patience because it shows obviously it's a good trait to have. It's essential to a uh, special sort leader because if they have patience, it gives others a chance because we um, lead at different rates. So it's also say if somebody wasn't um, as quick as learning, say if you got John and um, Alfie, John's a very good sportsman, he plays for the college, Alfie doesn't, he might not be as good, he might not be as fit. Just because he doesn't understand the task straight away doesn't mean you should be having a go at him or trying to move on. Everyone learns at different rates, so you have to be patient and slowly adapt to his game. So an example of a uh, sports leaders or coaches demonstrate this, Chris Todd. He's a player at the Academy football coach. He has high standards of coaching but won't lash out at others if they don't understand. But obviously there's a few teams in the Pro Direct Academy and then um, the first team, some of them are very uh, gifted and talented and then some of the other second and third, it might not be so, but it shows a level head. He shows if somebody doesn't understand, he'll go over the drill, make sure it's slow, make sure he understands and carry on around it. The third one down the list is persistence. Um, this is the definition of this is the fact of continuing an opinion or course of action in spite of difficult of the opposition. So, for an example, if you're being persistent, you're gonna carry on with something. For an example, so if your coach gives up on you, you that won't stop you working. It won't help your team. So, for an example, if you're persistent, say if you lost a few games. You still, you still carry on. You'll be persistent with that. You won't just lose your head or drop if something goes wrong. So, like for an example, this Alex Ferguson, he never gave up, and that's the reason for their like they never really defeated. He um he had believed in his players. Save even if they didn't have one loss, they'll pick themselves up and they'll go again. They're persistent. They'll um persist in the sport, persist in the manner that it went on. So they wouldn't just give up if something went wrong straight away. Or well, same with like Chris Todd as well. Just because if if you um if you go out in a cup or something, he yeah obviously he's annoyed, but he still wants you to carry on the season with high standards and stuff. So he's always been persistent, and there's always a line of inconsistency there. Empathy, the ability to understand and share the feeling with another. So for an example, if you're empathy with someone, you need this so that if anyone has a problem, they can come up to you and speak to you. Um, so obviously you want to come across like nice and empathy. So say if there's a child and he had maybe something going on at home, they didn't feel very comfortable. If he sees you as an empathy person, he'll come up to him and share things. And this is a good trait to have because it makes you more approachable as a PE teacher and can help you overcome challenges. So an example of this is um, Joe, um, entrant. I hope you boys can become empathy entrants to change the world. So that's a quote. So he shows that even if um, um, what if it goes on? He um, he's always he's always coming up so anyone can come up to him and change well. So a lot of P teachers um, have a lot of empathy because they have the ability to share themes with one another, so they won't feel as um, you know what I mean. The people come up to them and share if they have a problem, if they're anxious, if something's not going wrong. It makes you more approachable sports leader. 
Well, the next one is approachability. This is how capable you are of being approachable, your friend being approachable to different types of people. So approachability is a major aspect of being a sports leader because if you're not approachable, why people want to keep coming, why people want to keep training, why people want to respect you as a person, if you're not very approachable, you'd think, oh, I don't really get on with him. He doesn't really seem like a nice bloke. Don't come across nice. You don't want to get on with him. So it's essential for sports leaders to have approachability because it's important to show you're easy to, to take on and can have in various situations. So I've written that for an example because if um, somebody broke their leg or they're really hurt and you want you can want to go straight to you, you know what I mean? You can show them, you can look after them, make sure they feel well. You are very approachable, so you can come across. So Chris Todd is there for you, for an example of the Project Academy. He's always there. Obviously, he's a football coach and he does that, but... Lads, if like people want to go up to him and have a chat about something that's going wrong, he's an approachable person. I think he comes across well, so people can come up to him and have a chat. Yeah, he, he displays himself as a good person. Um, next one down there is consistency. And my definition of consistency, same approach to something all the time, denying with behaviour. So, for an example, if you, I was doing a theory lesson as a sports leader and somebody was on their phone and I said, can you put your phone away, please, mate? And then next week lesson, another different person was on their phone in the same class and I said, go on, out, that's it, first time. That's not showing the same level of consistency. Consistency has to be across the board with a straight line. So essential for, um, it is essential to a successful sports leader because um, you, you, you know what you have to expect. So when learners turn up to lesson, if you turn up on time, you know that you're, you're, um, you've got the consistency. For an example, this is Danny Gaze. He's um he's quite strict, but you always know the consistency. If you're not on time, he'll give you a um, um he like tell you off, um because obviously that's that's his um thing. He likes you being on time, which is obviously fair enough for his lesson. So he shows that one level of consistency. So every uh, sports teacher needs to show that so you're fair. Next one is going to be goal focus. Um, to the degree to which a person or organization focuses on a task and end result. So, for example, a goal focus, if you have um, your striker at the start of the season or you have a lesson, let's say you have a lesson, do you say, in this lesson, I want to achieve, I want them to understand the learning objectives, I want them to create a basic ground pass, I want them to make a shooting drill. You have that in the start of your head at the start of the session and you can be ticking off as you go because you want to make sure that is your goal focus for the end of the lesson. You might have goal focus for the end of the year. You might want everyone to reach their target grade. So everyone has their focus in their head. So it's essential for sports leaders to have this because they understand their current position and can measure wherever they want to go. So let's say all your students are on C's. Yeah, it might be good, but you want to progress them because you might want them all to finish on B's on merits. So you've got to push yourself a bit further on. An example of this is Chris Todd. Chris Todd, um, the gaffer of the ProDirect Academy, he has a lot of goals. At the start of the season, he might want the first team to win the league, the second team to win the Community Shield or something. He has goals in the top of his head and he can work towards them for the big games. The next one is commitment. Committed. Um, you're determined to complete on finishing something no matter what. So for a P teacher, say if there is, um, there's a lot of marking to do and you only have a short time to do it, you have to be committed to do that, to hand the work back out and make sure everybody understands the task. Or to say if... You have to be committed to turn up week in, week out for the lessons if you're putting up a voluntary lesson. So um, and it's not essential for small students because willing to put in the effort and help them improve combined to their course. So if people are turning up, they're showing commitment. It's obviously only fair for the leader or the PE teacher to come and show commitment too. Else what's the point in them turning up if no one's showing commitment? So an example of this is Arsene Wenger. He's committed to the Arsenal, of course. He's been there for 21 years. He's obviously part of the club. He's shown a lot of um, skills and qualities there. He loves the club. He's committed. He's been there from day one. So he shows week in, week out, but he still has a passion and a drive for the club. Attentive is the second to last one. Paying close attention to something makes participants feel important when you're keeping an eye on them. So, for an example, if you're watching people go round doing a sports drill, kicking a ball, you might want to praise somebody if you're showing that you've seen them doing well, you're interacting with them, you're giving them praise, which is obviously good and it makes them feel better so they'll react more positively and that'll create a knock-on effect. So Chris Todd, good example for this. If you make a good pass or a good thing, 
you'll shout well done lads or something like that and then it just makes you feel good and it puts you back in the, the mind um the last one is empowering um definition for this is make making someone stronger and more confident especially communicating life and clay needles so for an example this is important because it helps them enjoy what they're up with so empowering um Alex Ferguson hands down to the captain um, the armband that, that might be empowering because he will be um, giving someone a different responsibility on the pitch. So he could be giving someone an armband, let's say David Beckham shows that he's empowering him to lead the team and show drive and initiative. So this happens all the time in lessons as well with sports leaders. So if you're picking teams, you might pick two captains, somebody you think might be a role model, he might empower them to help them move on, um, build himself as a person and obviously as a coach. So yeah, it helps people develop if you show a bit of initiative and um, give them some power for once. But yeah, so that was vlog two. And now I'm going to do vlog three in a set.